In this video, we will discuss about the another congenital heart defect, the coarctation of aorta. In the classification of congenital heart defects, this comes under the obstructive defects. In a normal heart, we have four chambers with two atria at the top and two ventricles down below. When ventricles contract, blood from the left ventricle is pushed into the largest artery of the human body, the aorta, which branches to ensure the circulation of blood to the whole body. The branches of aorta providing blood to the head and arms are brachiocephalic artery, which divides into right subclavian artery and the right common carotid artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. For the blood to flow normally, the aorta should be nice and patent. But in the coarctation of aorta, there is narrowing of a segment of aorta distal to these branches and near the insertion of ductus arteriosus. This causes increased pressure proximal to the defect, leading to a high blood pressure in head and upper extremities, and a decreased pressure distal to the obstruction, leading to a lower blood pressure in body and lower extremities. The cause of the coarctation of aorta is not known. However, some of the risk factors include family history of coarctation of aorta, male gender, it is more common in males than females, genetic conditions like Turner syndrome, around 10 to 25 percent of patients with Turner syndrome have coarctation of aorta, viral infections during pregnancy, presence of other congenital heart defects such as ventricular septal defect, patent ductus arteriosus and others. Now we will discuss about the pathophysiology of coarctation of aorta. It is quite simple. The localized narrowing of the aorta causes increased pressure proximal to the defect, that is upper extremities, and decreased pressure distal to it, that is lower extremities. Talking about the clinical manifestations, the patient may have high blood pressure and bounding pulses in the arms, Weak or absent femoral pulses due to lower blood pressure. Cool lower extremities with lower blood pressure. The patient may have signs of heart failure. Older children may experience dizziness, fainting, and epistaxis from hypertension. Coarctation of aorta can be diagnosed by several investigations. The first is the echocardiogram. An echocardiogram can often show the location and severity of the coarctation of aorta. ECG may reveal thickening of the walls of the ventricles or ventricular hypertrophy. The chest X-ray may show a narrowing in the aorta at the site of coarctation. Cardiac magnetic resonance imaging or cardiac MRI can show the location and severity of coarctation of aorta, damage to other blood vessels and other heart defects. CT angiogram and cardiac catheterization can also show location and the severity of the defect. Now we will look at the treatment of coarctation of aorta. The non-surgical treatment is by balloon angioplasty. This is performed with the help of cardiac catheterization. A small balloon is inflated at the site of coarctation to widen the artery. The surgical treatment is the treatment of choice for infants younger than 6 months and for patients with long segment stenosis. It may be performed for all patients with coarctation. Repair is by resection of the coarcted part with end-to-end -end anastomosis of aorta or enlargement of constricted section using a graft of prosthetic material or a portion of the left subclavian artery. Lastly, the nursing management. Maintain an hourly blood pressure chart for the patient. Obtain blood samples for investigations including CBC, KFT, LFT, etc. Obtaining the consent for the surgery or angioplasty. Monitoring the femoral side for any active bleeding or any complications. Finally, medication administration as per the prescription. Thank you for watching. That was all about the coarctation of aorta.